Great. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics of interest to libraries. Um, we broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week, and it is posted onto our website as well. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can see um, all of our archives. Um, both the live show and the archives are free and open to anyone to watch. So uh, please share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics that we um, talk about here. Uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency in Nebraska for libraries and for all types of libraries in the state, not just public. Um, we tend to focus on publics just because we're their we're their major um, area of support, but um, we are the state agency for all types of libraries. So you will find shows upcoming and in our archives for uh, K through 12 schools, academic, university colleges, um, museums, correctional facilities. Um, I don't know what other kinds of things are. <laughs> Anything you can think of, you'll probably find on the show. Uh, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, um, demos of services and products. Uh, our only criteria is that it is something to do with libraries, something libraries are doing, something uh, we think they should be doing or could be interested in doing. Uh, so it goes across the board. We uh, do have Nebraska Library Commission staff that present certain topics uh, that are things that we are providing services and things we provide here through the Library Commission. But we also bring in guest speakers from um, across the state and outside of Nebraska too sometimes. And today we have a mixture of that <laughs> um, because we have a topic today that is statewide um, but that the commission is involved in. Yes. Um, with us this morning is uh, Tessa Terry who's our New, new, as in how long? A month, a month or two? Yeah. <laughs> uh, new communications <laughs> coordinator here at the Library Commission. She's been at the Library Commission for years before this, but just recently into a new position. Uh, Lorraine Rietzel on the end here. Uh, she's the director of the Beatrice Public Library, at just a little south of us here. We're here in Lincoln, Nebraska. And um, you are the coordinator of our Nebraska Letters About Literature right. program. And then remotely on the line with us is Christy Walsh, who is the Assistant Library Director at Kearney Public Library here in Nebraska, and the current Nebraska Center for the Book President. Good morning, Christy. Good morning. And um, they're going to tell us about this year's Letters About Literature pro uh, competition. So I'll just hand you over to you guys to take it away. Got your mouse and keyboard, and you can go to it. Great, thank you. So like Krista said, we're talking about Letters About Literature, and it's something we've been doing here in Nebraska for how long? Well, I just think you're doing the math. <laughs> we started in 99, so nearly, you know, they were saying it's 26 years, and I think this for us must be heading to about 20 now. When you start in 99 and we're 18 and count the first year, um, that's about, as, yeah, that's my math before noon. <laughs> So obviously many people in the state, um, teachers and librarians know about this contest, but they have made some changes this year as far as what their submission process looks like. So what we'll be doing today is talking about the contest in general and just hitting some highlights about what it's actually about, um, how Nebraska is involved, how the Center for the Book is involved, as well as going over that new submission process for everyone. So we'll just go along. Um, what is Letters About Literature, Maureen? No, <laughs> There's the slide, but it really, I have to say that you know, you've reduced these to bullet points, and I, I'm one of those people who used to write some paragraphs, so <laughs> forgive me. You know, it has been a while. But I, I do like the new slogan, the Read, Be Inspired, Write Back. I think that really you know, says a lot about it. I, I'm glad, too, they're talking about it as a program. I don't really like contests, and there's nothing that would surprise some people more than that I would be involved with this, let alone this long. But the first time I ever heard about this, I just thought, how fantastic to get kids who have been inspired. In, in their hearts, they know they're different. They know something's happened because they've read this book. And to encourage them to write to the very person who created those that work, that came up with those words in the first place, whether they're living or dead. because. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's the process for the child that's really important. So to have to say, well, I'm sorry, don't write to them, they're dead. Well, they're dead, but we know that's very mysterious in itself. So they may be 
hearing these letters and, and reading these letters right over the person's shoulder. <laughs> but the other important thing is that there's also some genre possibilities here that people often don't think of. They think, oh, this is going to be a child writing to their favorite author, and it's going to be, you know, Beverly Cleary. It's going to be J.K. Brown. It's going to be somebody. Suspects. Yeah, it's going to be somebody that. Uh, it's not a novel fiction. Mm -hmm. This can be fiction or nonfiction. It can be a short story. Mm -hmm. That's people, and that it can be a poem. It could be an essay. It could even be a speech. That again can be reduced to text. What it cannot be the song lyrics. So just put that out of your mind. It's not. We're not going there. It's a form of writing, but that's not what we're doing in this case. But otherwise, there's a lot of possibilities. Mm -hmm. So that something that has really touched this child's heart can they more than likely they can be writing to the person who wrote that and mm -hmm. as i said they're not limited by the time frame of that person's life they can go ahead and do that but the crucial thing is that what they're doing i like somewhere in all of this they mentioned that they're having a conversation mm -hmm. and this is their chance in a, in a sort of in, it's a letter format but in a conversation to say you wrote this, and I just want to tell you how much it's meant to me and how it has changed the way I perceive it. What would be more powerful than that? So we'll move right along. Christine is going to talk a little bit about what the Nebraska Center for the Book is and how it's involved in letters about literature. Sure. Um, the Nebraska Center for the Book is something that brings together the state's readers, writers, booksellers, librarians, publishers. Um, a variety of groups to build the community of the book and so there are people that know and love books and you know value that richness that it adds to our state and to readers you know anywhere else so we um, are involved in several different um, activities one is of course letters about literature which is a cooperative venture with the library of congress center for the the national center for the book which is in the library of congress the nebraska book festival the celebration of nebraska books and one book one nebraska which is obviously um, supported in part by communities nebraska letters about literature is one of those things that we hope um, will touch the hearts of lots of people um, to highlight the inspiration that comes from books both with the reading and writing and build those connections so hopefully anyone who is involved in it whether it is a teacher or a participant um, they enjoy the process they understand why it, they're willing to put into words what it is that speaks to them from a particular author or a particular book and so the Center for the Book, the Nebraska Center for the Book, facilitates um, encouraging participation from Nebraska schools and libraries. We try to provide the resources, um, obviously, with, with the Nebraska Library Commission. And thank you to everybody there who does so many things. Um, the resources to successfully submit your entries, answer questions, um, be a participant in the Letters About Literature competition. Did I leave anything out? I don't think so. I think you covered everything. Yeah. Okay. So, what is the story about the Nebraska Center for the Book's participation in Letters About Literature, Lori? Well, at one time, believe it or not, I also served as the president <laughs> of the Nebraska Center for the Book. And I will, I will add this, but what, that, what I feel about that group is, you know, there's people that when you choose a profession, you think, I, these are the kind of people I want to know. The center for the book kind of people are the kind of people I want to hang out with. These are people I want to know. These are connections that I want to make. And that the year that I was actually incoming because I got to go to Idea Day back in DC. And I heard it, that's the first time I'd ever heard about letters about literature. And I just loved it. And I thought, what a perfect fit for Nebraska, where one of the things that we're known for is our wonderful authors, deservedly so, of course. And I thought, I want these kids to be inspired by the fact that they're from a state that has this kind of legacy and that one, they have people to write to the right, right from home if they want to, but also that they can follow in a wonderful pattern of other people who've been in Nebraska or whatever you think about Nebraska 
I understand the, the tourism people now say it's not, it's not for everybody, but for 1.9 million of us it is. And for those people writing and expressing ourselves, appreciating literature, creating literature is, is part of our history and heritage. And I wanted to encourage them. I wanted them to think about that. And I wanted them to see themselves as possibly the next big thing in terms of Nebraska writing. So it just seemed like a wonderful opportunity for us. And we jumped right in and put together things as quickly as we could. Uh, right from the start, we had the children whose uh, letters are selected got to meet the governor. Mm -hmm. And we worked that out with the proclamation day. And so now in Nebraska, part of celebrating this, um, National Library Week statewide is recognizing those winners and their names are part of the proclamation. Mm -hmm. And they get to stand and shake hands with the governor and have a picture taken with them. I thought that that was so important. Their letters initially were just this to the archive. Now their letters go to the archive of the um, Bennett Martin Library's uh, Heritage Room of Nebraska Authors, Jane Kopkeski Heritage Room of Nebraska Authors. So again, they, they, their first, this, this example becomes something that is actually prized. Of course, we all go out to eat. And I really want those kids to feel as special as any kid at a sports banquet. I really want them to realize there is something to this. There's something to this reading. There's something to this appreciating a writer. There's something to expressing yourself about what you're reading. This is really, really important. So and we had a chance to kind of put all of that together. Thanks to the Library Commission. Thanks to the support from the Nebraska Center for the Book right from the start. In addition to the national prize, which of course is $100 for the person that's, that's whose letter is selected. We, Houch and Bindery from the start has given the, we have an alternate winner. We don't have any second place. Or, and I always tell them this, it, just in case the first person's letter, for some reason or other, can't go on, like the state, the year I heard about one state where they lost, the kid moved to another state and they had trouble tracking down, wasn't, weren't even sure they could submit that letter. That their letter is also worthy and that they also have done, have produced a super duper worth of art. Of, of literary merit. And so those those people also receive a prize thanks to Houch and Bindery right now, $75. And then we get a gift certificate from Chapters Bookstore. The Library Commission has always been good to give things like a book bag to take things home in. We up at, at the Ashton Book Library pride ourselves on giving out magic pencils. Sometimes they glow in the dark, sometimes they're a mood pencil. Yeah. One year I was able to find some that pinwheels on the end, but <laughs> uh, because so many authors encourage people to write in pencil, and although many kids tell me if they don't have their computer in front of them, they don't know how to write. It, I'm still handing out the old fashioned pencil just in case they need that. So that's some of, of the, the prizes and things that have happened. The stories could go on and on, I promise that it's, I'm, I'm dangerous on this subject. But I have to say, for those of you who think that this might be something that only the brightest kid with the best, well, I would say penmanship, but of course we don't do that anymore, the best skills and the best grammar. When, this is something that does come from the heart. And one of the stories I was thinking about today is that one year when I called about the winner, and the, the judges had had quite a time with it, and when I reminded them of what the criteria was, they said, now we know which one. When I called the school, the teacher who had had a previous winner said to me, is this a joke? And I said, oh, you should know me better than that. <laughs> I never joke about letters about literature. It's way too big a deal to just be telling little casual jokes. And why would I call and tell someone they won? What, how cruel they, would that be? And, they, yeah. and uh, it was because the student had just been mainstreamed into the regular classroom is the first thing that's <laughs> and they had read Gary Paulson's Hatchet. Mm -hmm. And this was a book, this kid goes out and hunts with his dad, and that story just touched him. And it came through, even though it wasn't the highest quality writing perhaps ever, it really that's not what showed. It's about, and <clears throat> then he was worried about, was I going to make him read this letter in public because he wasn't that strong a reader and I never do that. Because <laughs> I, I, again, this is a speech contest. No. But I had, I when I asked him, and, I, and he was, you can see he was a little nervous, and I said to him, you love hunting. Bang. He just, he just told what that story meant to him in his own words, just like that. And I think of that often because how many times do we, are we able to reach and touch someone like that? 
the other quick thing I want to mention is one year, uh, people, the child was being honored and two parents came forward and the man worked for the power company here in Nebraska and he had literally had to find his own substitutes who was out on a pole doing, making sure we had electricity in Nebraska, no small thing with our yeah. wind and weather. <clears throat> and he had taken off from work and what he wanted to do was this child had already won a poetry contest. Oh. And he said, mm -hmm. we have nothing like this either. Us went to college. Mm -hmm. We don't, what, what, what should we do for our son? And I was so impressed mm -hmm. with them because again, he was actually paying someone else to be there so that they could be there for their son that day. So meeting these kids, meeting the parents, meeting the teachers that go along with it, because mm -hmm. those people are also invited to our special day when we recognize them. All that, it, you know, every year, no matter what has gone on in the news, no matter how bad it is, I feel so much better after Letters About Literature. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes this is couched as just a school activity, something you do in the classroom, but it doesn't have to be just for teachers or school librarians. Um, we want the public library, the community library to be involved as well, and there are lots of ways that can happen. Um, Lori? Well, I will just say, I'm always trying to get teachers to seriously consider doing this. It fits mm -hmm. into the, the whole framework of what they're supposed to be doing. It's one of the activities that they can do. And it, it, it doesn't have to be a whole in the fall. It doesn't have to be a whole classroom activity. They can just, even encouraging the children that they think that this would really mean something to. In fact, actually, I often feel even better about that. If they just say to people, this is something you can do. And I don't know, I'm not trying to tell them how to teach their class, but it, we know that when the, there's there are kids that this is going to just spark that gleam in their eye, they're going to think, I really want to do this. And judging from the fact that often when I'm contacting the, the people and saying, oh, by the way, we're presenting a copy, there's kind of a gasp, and I say, don't worry, you didn't keep a copy, did you? No, because <laughs> it was just one more assignment for them. And I said, not to worry, I've right, got copies. Got it. <laughs> you're, it's okay. But just encouraging teachers to really do this. Mm -hmm. And I realize that you don't have it because homeschoolers, People can enter this without going through a formal classroom, mm -hmm. but that is certainly the way to contact most people kind of all at once. Mm -hmm. We do have, um, last year we had grants that we worked with through Humanities Nebraska as well as Center for the Book to have several um, librarians or teachers across the state provide clinics, letter writing clinics. Christine, do you want to talk a little about, bit about that? Sure. Um, we ended up awarding four grants of $300 a piece, I believe, um, to four different libraries. Three were public libraries and one was a school. So Baird Public Library, Morrill Public Library, Overton Public Schools, and the Housh Memorial Library. Um, so that they could host letter writing clinics to entice people or encourage students to um, enter the competition to help teachers get a better idea of what it was that the competition involves. How do you help coach um, students or anybody who wants to be involved to craft those letters um, to be submitted for the competition? And annually, there are about 50,000 people who are involved, grades four to 12, that, you know, turn in letters, which I think is phenomenal, and that's nationwide. So it isn't just Nebraska. We just want to make sure that Nebraska is engaged um, and excited to do this. So we thought with the letter writing clinics, it would help people feel more confident in the process, give them some examples of what's been done in the past, to take some of the, perhaps the fear factor out of it because like you said it's not a graded assignment this is encouraging readers to put their words down and speak from their heart about why something touched them um, so the activities um, were to help students select books so you could work with your public library to go in and you know do some book talks, suggest what might be interesting. Maybe that's the one that sparks um, a student to pick up that book and that becomes their inspiration for their letter about literature. 
but at least to give them some ideas because sometimes it's very overwhelming to walk into a library and go, I have no idea what my favorite book is. <laughs> so let's, I, or you can have lots of favorites, but you have to kind of whittle it down to one and, um, <laughs> and, and write your letter. Um, but the idea was to help get those tools into the hands of librarians and teachers and then work with those students so that they felt they were confident in um, submitting their letters. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was exciting to be able to, um, you know, have the funds to encourage people to be involved because you still run into people going, what is letters about literature? So then, you know, Lorene and I and whoever else says, yeah. <laughs> let me let me share some ideas with you. Um, oh, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> right. Are you sure you want? Anyway, um, because it's an exciting thing. And like you said, there are competitions. And I know that it, this isn't really it is, but it isn't a competition. We want to encourage people to be engaged. Mm -hmm. And everybody's got different strengths and talents. And um, so there's a place for the readers and the writers. And certainly those overlap with um, skills in music or sports or whatever it is. There's something for everybody. And this is just something that fits in with the mission for the Center for the Book, the Library of Congress, all of those things to support the literature part of our lives. I wasn't really that sure about these writing points when it came up for reasons we won't even get into right now because it turned out to be irrelevant. Mm -hmm. uh, one, of our, one of our winners last year, that was one of the things that she talked to, her teacher talked about was going to that and how, mm -hmm. how helpful that had been for her. But uh, the, the reason I was bringing that up is that one of the things I learned out of hearing about these, these uh, educational opportunities was how exotic a letter is. Who would have thought when Letters About Literature started that the part that would become an, a strange uh, me message from the past would be mm -hmm. writing a letter? And so it, the, I know one of the activities they did was write letters and send them to each other. And the excitement of getting a letter was just <laughs> new to some of these fourth grade kids. Yeah. And, and I... I, it made it made me rethink things in my own life. Certainly, who did I had I written to lately, and mm -hmm. has my granddaughter gotten a letter from me ever lately? But it also made me realize that that in doing this, when we, we initially when this was started, mm -hmm. that was not something exotic to do to write yeah. a letter. Now we have to stop. Not only do you have to talk about all the other concerns, but even what is a letter really? Mm -hmm. What is it you're doing when you sit down to write this? And I I don't know. I wonder, I wonder about that too, that yeah, do these kids, we don't write letters we, if we're going to communicate with someone in more of a long form, I guess mm -hmm. we call it, you send an email. Yeah. Right. Basically, it is the same thing. I mean, you're going to write the same info, you're just putting it into an email um, instead, an email message rather than writing a letter on a um, on your computer, which you then present or whatever. Mm -hmm. Is there any talk about trying to, or do they teach it that way to, to just re- reformat to say it's like an email you write an email to someone explaining here's what I'm doing blah 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 it's the same thing but it's just not in your email account I mean <laughs> or are we still trying to keep the idea of letter writing alive too well I think the idea of just crafting good communication exactly that's what I'm saying it's not and the, so, not the way so you, it translates yeah all over life and this yeah. just happens to be you know two authors but to be they able to put your thoughts down. and have it be an email message mm -hmm. to somebody rather than a, a quote unquote a letter. letter and it would still be the content is what matters not how they what they use to write it and how to be able to edit your thoughts and and yeah, string yes. together so it's a cohesive message um right. It's well, that important. doesn't sound like most of the emails I receive. Well, I don't see, know about the rest of too. you. Emails but, getting... <laughs> I've had very incoherent ones arrive at times. But it doesn't mean we can't keep trying to make sure that there are outlets for great communication. <laughs> Since I knew I was going to be doing this today, I actually got out the rules and looked at them. And one of the things that they were talking about is formatting so that it does appear to be a letter. And I know it's a great yeah. shock every now and then when I have to actually send out a formal business letter, you know, we have to scurry around and, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, you still have to do cover letters for job applications. Exactly. So it's not exactly. going away anyway. No. I mean, yeah. 
Yeah. Just adapted to a different format. Yeah. Right, right. So we're going to move right along into the new submission process. It is different this year. Uh, in the past, you have either printed out and physically mailed your letters to um, Florine at the Beatrice Public no, they Library. Went to, no, they did not. They went no. to Washington. They went to Washington. Yes. I never had to get all the letters. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. <laughs> this year, it's very different. So when you're submitting, the first thing you're going to do is you can either go to the Nebraska Center for the Book website to our L Letters About Literature page, and we have a link to our Nebraska submission on that page. You can also go to the Library of Congress um, web page, which we're going to look at right now just so you can see what the process looks like. So when you come to the Library of Congress, website to the Letters About Literature page. They have right here at the top a drop down where you will select your state, Nebraska hopefully, <laughs> and then it will take you to another page. But the link you're looking for is this enter online link. And this is the same link that we have on the um, Nebraska Center for the Book page. So that's just can, a bit of a... Yeah, and you can see, you know, obviously we're here you know, presenting this from the Nebraska, you can see if you're in a different state, you'll just find your own state's information and go to their link. Exactly. So yes. Don't go to Nebraska's <laughs> if you're not in Nebraska. <laughs> yeah, we don't no, want to. Okay. <laughs> we don't want to. We don't want to confuse people. <laughs> I have gotten some some entries sometimes. I got one one time but, from Oyster Bay or something. It was in Maine. Oh. Wow. And I knew right away when I got that oyster. I thought this is There's not nothing, Nebraska. No, yeah. <laughs> No oyster bay. I know we do have people on with us today who are not in Nebraska or who'll be watching this recording later. So yeah, that's true. Your state. It does give you a little overview about what Nebraska's or each state's specific details are, what your state deadline is. If you don't have access to um, the internet and you can't physically sub or submit them online, you can mail them the physical letters to the Beatrice Public Library, and we will upload them to the submission process for you. But please only do that if you absolutely possibly you absolutely have to. Have to. <laughs> That's really a uh, way to deal with method. those. It's, preferred method it's really a way to deal with those people who are under age. Uh, mm. Yes. In the magic. That's why we chose that alternative this year. And it looks like even now that can actually be handled. Mm. So it, at, at one point it looked like we absolutely had to deal with them through the mail, mm -hmm. and now that with this parental permission situation, uh, so please, please make this as, as please take care of as much of this for yourself as you can. And I'm saying that because it would be coming to me, and so try not to make any more work for me. <laughs> so once you click that link, or if you go to the Nebraska Center for the Book page, you will come here, and it once again gives you a quick overview of our state-specific guidelines as well as a tutorial if you need it. You do have to create an account in Submittable. Now you don't have to create an account for each individual student or sub submittee. You can do a teacher account and then they submit through your account. So it's all under sort of your school umbrella or your library umbrella. So that will be your first step. So I'm going to get out of here. We're going to actually go through a test demonstration form that the Library of Congress has set up for us so that That's we nice. can see exactly what you'll see. Exact, yes. So after you create your account, I already have an account. It's going to make me do it again. There you go. Log in. I hope I can remember my password. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, no. Nope. Right. Oh, I do. Sometimes our wireless mouse and keyboard don't play nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've also gotten used to that it remembers my login mm. information on my computer. So I hope I I don't remember when I made my password. We'll guess. Nope, that wasn't it. Hmm. 
All right, I'm going to let you create another one. I don't know. Lorraine, do you remember your password? Are you talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> no, I never remember passwords. Uh, I try to use the same ones, and even then I don't remember I them. I don't remember where I put this. Okay. This is the difference between doing it on your computer and the computer <laughs> here in the conference so, yeah, room. I think they like write down the cheat sheet that would have I it. I know. Here. Okay. It's just not something we tell you to do for security. Don't write down passwords. No, right. In this case. But apparently I needed to write down my password. Um, we'll make a, a new account for Krista. Yeah, Krista. You can help us say, out here now. Minus, <laughs> um, I'm going to make up your password for you. It's no wonder she's going to remember that one. <laughs> All right. So once you're in, um, pretty easy. They don't ask for too much information up front. Um, you can personalize your account. You can ask them to send you email updates. You don't have to do that. Once you are through into your state submission form, it gives you that overview like we saw before about your specific state. And then it's going to ask you for your, more, for your information. The most important thing is these, this first address line is for your specific school or library. It's not your personal information. So it's wherever you wanna be contacted um, when Lorraine contacts you, if you won, this is that information. So, um, it would be the Nebraska Library Commission and our address, Lincoln. If I was the one doing this for my students or um, if it's a parent doing it for their homeschooler, it would obviously be their personal information. But you can just go through and fill out all this normal information. So we'll do that. Oh my gosh, I really can't type on this thing. Mm -hmm. That just makes it seem more realistic. Don't we all have moments? <laughs> it does. really is tricky. There we go. So that's your first step. The next form it's going to bring you to is this is the actual submission process. Now you're going to choose if you are having the students do them do this themselves. So you have them all log into this account and then they submit their own letters. That's definitely an option. Um, if you have them send you their files and then you do it, you choose whichever option is most appropriate for you. So if you're a teacher or librarian, um, it's going to give you this information. Now, the nice thing about doing this all under one account is that all the students will have the same um, contact information for um, the school. You won't have to fill that in every time. So you would put in the student's name, which in this case, it's gonna be Krista. You're their submitting oh, okay. student. Submitting so this student. isn't your name. This is <laughs> the student that you're actually submitting for, or it's the student submitting for themselves. Put in the name first name and put in um, Sarah. That's my sister. We'll fake it. With an H again? Yes. So pretend this is my sister doing this. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you pick the age. This is important um, because this is an online submission. Anyone that is under the age of 13 as of um, November 1st this year has to have a signed consent form from their parents. So if I click on anybody younger than 13, it comes up with this warning for me. And it pops up the actual form that you have to use. That I can click on and I can download. They have tried to make this as easy as possible to get around these um, rules they have for submitting online. So it's a fillable form. You can just um, fill out in, if you have a, 
this PDF. You can fill it out online and print it and then have the signature. You can scan it back in to upload it. You can, they even said you can do something as simple as taking a photograph of it with a smartphone um, if you don't have a scanner accessible. If you're not under 13, you don't have to, it just takes it away. Moves on. Yes. Um, you will notice the red asterisks tell us which are the required information. And then we can put in what grade we're in, what level of competition they're going to be in. And then it does ask you for what type of work you are writing your letter about. Let's see, we'll do Harry Potter. That would be appropriate for her. She just wore a Harry Potter t-shirt recently. <laughs> <laughs> Is a Hermione Granger quote says, when in doubt, go to the library. Oh, yeah. we love that girl. So true. <laughs> and then it gives you two different ways to submit your file. You can either upload a file, and when you choose that, it document you've already written down. Yep. Oh, all those types. You can do several different file types, yes. They've tried to make this as easy as possible for Any you guys. weird format you might have saved it into. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Now, they are very clear um, if it includes the student's address or contact information as a header or anything on the letter, it will um, include those words in the word count. So they suggest that you don't have that, inf since you're already filling out that information above, that you just leave that off your letter. So the document itself, the letter itself, is just the, the content of the letter, right. starting with Dear um, Author, J.K. Rowling. Yes, exactly. And then um, at the end, you know, sincerely, Sarah. Yeah. But they don't, they don't want a header with that information like it, like if mm -hmm. you would if it was a school assignment. Um, you can also type the letter directly into this platform. So you can just start, like we said. I'm and just Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. There we go. <laughs> so it will count your words for you. Once again, everything you type in here is included in that word count. So it has to be between 400 and 800 words. And then um, I know in the past huh. they've decorated the envelopes, um, sent in drawings with their letters, anything that <clears throat> they want to include can still be included. And they've given you a way to do that as but well. Please also note right on there, it says, please note that these materials will not be considered during the contest judging right. process. So as somebody that's been at that state, if it makes you feel better when you're doing it, that's you fine. Like, but if that's you've not something be, and you like it, that's great. But yeah, yeah it's yeah, not part yeah, of the I, process. I can assure you that that in all these years, yeah. those letters, it was about the words written down. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not required, um, but if it's part of the tradition that you've already built for your program, they just want to make sure you have a way to share that with them as well. Right. Yeah. And then a place for you to upload even more files, different types of files. They have a terms of use, which we are all familiar with when doing online forms, but they give it to you very clearly and you can read through it. And it's actually not as long as you might think. Yeah, it's kind of short. Yeah. Some that I've seen. But it's there for you if that's something you're worried about. You do have to click that, that you have read it or that you agree to it if you read that. And then you, if you're not, um, if you're typing your letter in and you're not done with it, you can save it as a draft or you can just click submit. I see it says auto save too. So as you're going, does it save too? If like, when did it last save? Cause it has that auto save. See, I don't Good, know. Cause it doesn't indicate that, does it? No. Where does my drafts take me? Hey, save drafts. Oh, yep. So you do have a save draft. Let's go back. I'd say double click it anyway. Anyways, click it anyways just to make sure that it's saved since it's there yeah. as a button. Yeah. It's, saving is never a bad option. But then you can submit your work if you're uh, yeah, ready with it. it. Uncheck oh. the box for the terms. Yeah, there we go. Common. So it tells you it happened. And then they, <laughs> so you don't have to be afraid, you know, if 
your letter is successfully submitted, it tells you it has been. Now, just like, and then it takes you back to this page so you can submit another letter if you'd like to. You do have a way to see what letters you've submitted. You can come to your user account up here at the top and look at your submissions. And we see that Sarah Burns has mm -hmm. submitted this. It's been received. You can, um, if you accidentally hit that submit button and you weren't done yet, um, you can request uh, to edit your submission before the deadline. But you have you can't just mm -hmm. go in and edit a submitted uh, letter. You have to request that yeah. ability. Mm -hmm. But as long as it's inside the submission time before the deadline, yeah, you can always go back and change. I see it has withdrawn too, so you can decide. Never mind. I want. I don't want. You know. I, I, if someone okay. changes their mind, mm -hmm. that's an option they give you. Mm -hmm. And I have no saved drafts. So it just gives you if you're a teacher or a librarian mm -hmm. and you have 20 submission letters, you can go in and make sure you have them all in there so you don't miss one. Now, before we go off this page, at the yeah. bottom, it says there's an app. That's something new to me, but mm. it does say new. So track your submissions and find new opportunities in your mobile device. Check out the submittable app. Huh. So you could do this on your phone. That obviously um, would not be something you'd want to actually like type, type in a letter or, on your phone. No, yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> but like <laughs> afterwards, if you just need to quickly check something, maybe that's uh, a way to quickly right that you could go yeah. in and see oh, it's the day before the deadline and it's a weekend you yeah know, have all my good. students mm -hmm. gone in and submitted their letters hmm. so something to check out they like I said they've tried to make this as easy as possible for you guys since this is a new process if you are a teacher and you've used submittable before this will all be something you're familiar with if it's not I hope just being able to walk through this has helped. And I'll just let you know, I have, I'm have i logged into my email here on this laptop. Um, I use this to you know, track questions mm -hmm. and things you have. And it did send me an email because um, Tess had set up the account for me. Um, Letters about literature submission received burns. So I got an email to my email account letting me know that this one had been sent in. Yes. Um, this is on the test side too. So yes, and this is, is all real, a test. Yes. This is all just practicing. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is the process it would go through um, and we were using the real exact live link. Now they have, this is the video tutorial that they showed um, on the state submission form when we did the actual Nebraska, sub, Nebraska submission. Um, it is about eight minutes. It's really fast and easy and they walk you through what we just did again. So if you need a refresher, or you would like to have your students watch this and have them submit them themselves, this is a great um, resource and it will be very helpful. And as far as other resources for writing the letters, for submitting them, the Library of Congress has several videos about the actual letters about literature process that when you go to it, just what is a letter, an introduction to the actual program. So lots of good resources here on the Library of Congress website. We've also got several resources on the Nebraska Center for the Book um, Letters About Literature page. Right here you can see the Nebraska submission platform. It's right there at the very top for you, as well as the official rules. So we will have um, a link to last year's Letters About Literature webinar, which talks about the actual contest. We'll have a link after this to the recorded session of this webinar. We've got links for past winners. There's a reflective writing assessment that Catherine Gurley from the National Letters About Literature program put out uh, <coughs> last year, a couple years ago. And it's very helpful as well. So this is a great place to come if you have questions as well. You can also follow the Nebraska Center for the Book on Facebook. We will put updates about the contest, um, about the winners in April. So that's another great place you can, you know, message the Nebraska Library Commission and ask questions there. And who makes all this possible for Nebraska? Um, we have several sponsors. We mentioned the Nebraska Center for the Book and the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, 
Laureen mentioned Chapters Bookstore, and we also have a lot of help from Humanities Nebraska and Huchin Bindery. So they help with prizes, they help with um, grant money for the clinics, so a lot of good information. And then this is my, my contact information if you have questions about the submittable platform, if you have questions about the process in general, you can always contact me by email or by phone. If you have any questions right now, um, go ahead and in your GoToWebinar interface, there's a question section. Some people have already been asking me other stuff. Oh, wonderful. This isn't really. Oh. <laughs> um, it's okay. <laughs> um, but if you do have questions about letters about literature, go ahead and type a question into there, and um, Tessa or Lorraine or Christy can answer your questions now. So did we the form opened up November 1st, so yes. last week, and the deadline is December, December 14th. 14th. Okay. And that really is a deadline. Mm -hmm. It's not just like a no random yeah. number that There's you no can negotiate. There's no wiggle room yeah, on that. that one, there isn't. Yes. And if you're is a Friday, so. mailing physical letters in, um, they need to come in well before that because yes. we have to submit them before that mm -hmm. um, December 14th. Somebody's going to have to enter those letters. Yeah. Yeah. So if That's good to know. Yeah. someone comes it's up again. It's not a postmark date. It's a no. we need them in hand because then we go in. Right. Not me, you guys. Go <laughs> into the online form and get that information into there mm -hmm. by the end of the day on that Friday. Yes. So that is a very important note. And those deadlines are national. The, right. the, right. center for, the National Center for the Book from the Library of Congress gave the state centers or state affiliates like two choices for what those deadlines would be. So it is consistent across the country, mm -hmm. um, depending on how you facilitate the program in your state. Now, and we need that deadline in order to be standing in April with the governor, having him shake his hands with his kids. <laughs> yeah. And that was uh, one of those pictures so, I think earlier yeah. in the slide. Yes. That was the, so that, those. That's, what needs, that's what needs to happen and, and counting backwards we needed to have this happen in December so mm -hmm. that, because that, that's, again, that's a national deadline. So then by the time things come back to us, mm -hmm. it's well into January and then our judges need February and then the governor's mm -hmm. office, those people need so all that, of March. That's, so. that's a question I have actually, the judging. The judges are people here in Nebraska. That's correct. So you're submitting these letters to DC, we'll say, mm -hmm. but then they filter them back to you, yeah, the, yes. or yeah, the, yeah, to the, then the letters have, once they go nationally, then they're sent back to the state coordinators, mm -hmm. and we have state judges who are wonderful, credible mm -hmm. people uh -huh. who really take this seriously and mm -hmm. and spend the time. We have combined. There's supposed to be kind of like three rounds. The first one is just making sure the letters fit the criteria, and we let people somewhere else take care of that for us. But then Nebraska, starting at the second round, we've combined second and third with two judges so that they are choosing from that point mm -hmm. going through and mm -hmm. figuring out who are the winners. And there, mm -hmm. there is a, a judges rubric about what does it take to be a winner that, again, that they have used over the years mm -hmm. in terms of, of mm -hmm. consistency. And How I many think, judges do we have? Do we, I, I, saw, I know for other like awards and things, we have different judges for different types of books. These are, mm -hmm. I mean, are there, is it just a group of judges that look at every, yeah. all of them? No. Or are yeah. they split up two by judges something? for each each one that are different judges. So okay. the people who are doing fourth to sixth grade are much more familiar with that age group than the people who are doing the high school uh, where sure, we've had people sense. there mm -hmm. ordinarily that have academic credentials that where they they are looking at people that are they're expecting to see in their classes. In, so we've had English professors and people that, that have that criteria and are very excited yeah. about these letters mm -hmm. in terms mm -hmm. of of looking at people who are, are, are leaving high school and going on. And what, out, how, are, how are they writing? Yeah, right. yes, right. exactly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So a different, I, it, a different it, thing I was amazed when anybody would think that we would have chosen the same ones. I chose, mm -hmm. we've always had two judges, and that's so you'd have more than one opinion. Sure. And I've also always said to them, now what I'm holding back as the state administrator is if you can't decide, I will make <laughs> I will break the tie. Where are the tie and breaker? I have never oh. done that yet. Just, the, just when I mentioned that, they immediately, that just inspires them that they're <laughs> going to figure this out for themselves. They're not going to let me break the tie. We do have one question that came in. Someone said, typically, how many Nebraska entries are received? 
Last year we had a, like 420, I think, statewide. Mm -hmm. We don't see wow. that yeah, many 100. come back because some of them, sadly enough, mm -hmm. write book reports, um, mm -hmm. you know, write fan letters. So, so you really over 400 are submitted, and then in at, at the um, Library of Congress Center for Book, they decide which ones met the basic criteria right. that's, of that's what, being correctly right. written, and only Actually, those are then sent back. We just let states. them. Now, some states get everything back, but right from the start, mm -hmm. that because it used to all be that they they, they did uh, evaluation mm -hmm. for other people, mm -hmm. and we thought, why not let them sort that out? They mm -hmm. know what this contest is. And that means that what we get back are the letters that actually meet the criteria, and then our judges are focused just on that. The, on what the, criteria are. Yeah. the first year that we went to that system, though, I have to say, is we used to have them, they'd already gone through two rounds. And mm -hmm. the first year, the, the seventh and eighth graders went from us receiving 30 letters back to receiving over 90. And that year, I did add another judge, and we went through a, a two-cycle uh -huh. process mm -hmm. so in order to get that that many letters read in that amount of time. How many came judge. back to us last year? Uh, I didn't bring my individual uh -huh. uh, amounts, mm -hmm. but it sadly enough, you'd think after that many, and knowing what the criteria is, that we'd get yeah. you know hundreds and hundreds mm -hmm. of letters. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, ordinarily. I, I would say it's probably about a hundred letters that come back total wow. in counting up all of all of the um, each each one of the categories. It, it, say twenty to thirty, and there's three categories mm -hmm. to give you some idea. Mm -hmm. So obviously, sad to say, some people are not really follow. They're not reaching. They're, yeah. they're a, that's partly, I think, too, the idea right. of the workshops is we want these people to be successful. We want those students' letters to have a chance. To really yeah. be judged mm -hmm. and not just have them, as they, and maybe maybe for the teacher they were happy having them write a fan letter or happy with them <laughs> and doing this as more of a book report or or something else. Right. Perhaps that was something that met their criteria, criteria. but, but it, not, it didn't. It doesn't, it doesn't make it doesn't move yeah. them into yes. the the final round of of evaluation mm -hmm. of those letters. Uh, so we have another follow-up question, some more specific advice. Any advice when the student is passionately in love with a fairly common title, like Harry Potter, what we use, how do you help move the student to make significant observations about such a popular title? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, they do have to make it personal to them. Absolutely, it has did. to be personal. We had um, a winner last year. I can't remember if she was a winner or a runner-up, but she wrote about... Um, Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird, which is obviously a very, I mean, it won the um, PBS. Yeah, it's popular yeah, with great, everybody. Great, great. <laughs> everybody loves that book, and everybody reads that book in school, I think. So, um, but that was still a winning letter. And um, do we have, I'm not sure if we have that uh, last year's of letters available online. I believe we do. Um, I made sure you get have access to them, so if you don't, it's on you, Tessa. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I think down here on our Letters About Literature site, we have past winners, and I do, yes. yes. And yeah, so I, we have, yeah, we have letter. her letter on here. We have mm -hmm. past winners for Nebraska on here, um, mm -hmm. and who their author was. So we've got um, Suzanne Collins for The Hunger Games. Um, the Herman Melville was a really fun one last oh, year. That it was. was one of his um, uh, more obscure, a really obscure stories. short story. But I mean, excellent. And so you can see that Harper Lee letter and um, see what she did differently. She was actually named after Harper Lee. Her it was her mother's favorite book, so she immediately had uh, a personal connection to that um, author. But that, that wouldn't title. have been enough, right? <laughs> that wasn't enough. Um, yeah. Warren, do you have any more specific ways to for them to? That's what I was going to say. Basically, variations on that. Try to get that child from just that that fan enthusiasm mm -hmm. to reach down deep. What? What? Why? What mm -hmm. is so special about this? What in your experience <clears throat> ties to that book that made you think that is about me? That mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. author is writing this book right to me, and it and it is mm -hmm. that is hard for the students. Often aren't, they aren't asked anything like this. Mm -hmm. A person that's shyer or just not very contemplative yeah. may have quite is, a challenge. I think it's hard even as an adult. I mean, I read a lot of books, and 
some of them affect me. Some of them, mm -hmm. it was just fun to read the right. story, and I enjoyed the entertainment of it. But there was no deep connection, connection, yeah. and that's okay. And, and, and if you've read a book and not had that deep connection, you say to the kid, "Okay, yeah, you're a fan of Harry Potter. You enjoy him." Did it, and maybe that's the question to say, and you want to write about it because you're a fan, but did it deeply affect you or mm -hmm. change something about something that you think or make you do something different in your life? And if it didn't, that's okay. Enjoying the book for just enjoyment purposes is fine. Maybe you need to find another title. Right. Or maybe you could find, you know, if they list out a few specific things that, like the hatchet example, you know, the hunting was a very specific theme right. in that for him. Yes. If, if, for some reason, Hatchet hadn't been the book that had moved him, but the hunting part had connected. Maybe find some other titles, you know, sure. the reader advisor sort of mm -hmm. idea mm -hmm. of a library and where you can find other titles that have that same theme that might connect in mm -hmm. a more substantial way. Yeah, and another way of doing it too, if you if they really, really want to write about Harry Potter and they just, because they're just a fan, tell them, all right, you need to think about it in a different way and maybe start with, is there anything in these books that are just like you? that sounds like your yeah. life or something that you I and I identify with sometimes especially for the younger kids could be harder but just say is there anything in there that you recognize that sounds like something that's happened to you in your life or could happen to you or is something that you and your friends do there you go that's your thing mm -hmm. now talk about that they might not even realize that it was something that affected them they just love the book so much and sometimes until they think about it and right. having to do this they suddenly they make that connection you kind of have to leave them to did you realize that they're just like you and your friends who do these things? Oh my gosh! There you go. <laughs> I was going to say the other thing is sometimes where you where this person is going to go, maybe something that's really so deeply personal mm -hmm. that they aren't ready to write about it or sure, don't feel sure. they mm -hmm. have permission to write about it. I was thinking about one letter that came in one year, and the judge called me and said, is the teacher aware, I don't know how they thought I got this letter, <laughs> is the teacher aware of this situation because they actually felt uh -huh. like some kind of intervention was necessary in mm -hmm. terms of what the child was telling us. Now I knew that the teacher was very aware, but that child had been willing to spill out on a page a situation that really was serious enough that other adults needed to be involved mm -hmm. in it. And they couldn't, they couldn't voice it. Just talking to somebody, but they're able to write about it. Evidently, mm -hmm. so. All right, so I hope that's helpful when you're talking to your kids about doing this. All right, we're just a little after 11 a.m. here. Um, our, our shows usually go for an hour. Anybody have any last-minute questions they want to ask of Tessa Lorena or Christy? Or any, um, type them in, and we'll get them answered for you right now. Or you can always reach out to them, their contact information. Mm -hmm is out there um, or anything last minute things that uh, last words that you guys want to say I just point you back to that comment uh, which is on the header of this how did an author's work change your view of the world or yourself mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. all right well I was waiting to see if anybody's typing anything in you can't see if you're typing, you gotta wait until you actually hit enter on no. <laughs> the way that works. So um, but that's fine. Um, I think we'll wrap it up then today. And as we saw here and with your slides, you had yours at the very end. Oh ah, I did something. That's okay. Uh, here we go. There we go. Send all oh, questions. Test is <laughs> Sure, if you want to, I guess. Yep, I'm if the it's main. it's something that she needs help answering, she'll. I'm the main out. contact, so um, if if it's a question that I can't answer, I'll reach out to Laureen or Christine or someone else that can get that question answered for you. But yep, I'm your first place to ask questions. All right, All right great. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, go back out to here we go, browser. There we go. Um, so that will wrap it up for today's show. Uh, we are recording, and I will show you here. This is our Nebraska Library Commission website, and you can search on here for Encompass Live, or you can even just use your um, search engine of choice. <clears throat> so far, Encompass Live is the only thing called that <clears throat> Excuse me, on the Internet. Yay. Nobody else used this name. 
we haven't copyrighted <laughs> it, but please don't. Uh, <laughs> so you'll find us here at um, nlc.nebraska.gov slash Encompass Live, where we've got our upcoming shows listed, but right underneath them is the link to our archives. So if you click there, you will see um, our recordings go up here. Today's show will be available probably as long as um, everything cooperates by the end of the day today. And um, everyone who attended today and who registered will get an email from me letting me know. Um, and we post it out to our various social media, our uh, Facebook, Twitter, and we have mailing lists here within the state. Um, your, um, the archive will be here. It will have a link. This is last week's a link to the recording, and we'll have the slides mm -hmm. that Tessa put together as well. So you'll have both of those there as well. Uh, the recording is posted to the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel, so you can go and watch it there. And the presentations we posted onto our SlideShare account online. Um, most recent ones are first are at the top of the list here. Encompass Live 2018 is you were talking about how long something's been uh, around. Uh, 2018 <laughs> is the tenth year of Encompass Live. So we've been around for a while, but and we have all of our archive shows here. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, and I'll do that quickly here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Close your eyes if you don't get sick. We do have <laughs> our very first shows here, <clears throat> going back to January 2009. So do be aware when you're going through our archives that you will find some old information in here. You'll find some shows about things that were previously done, like last year's letters about literature would have been, you know, good for, you know, about the program. But as far as the submission, it's different. So mm -hmm. be aware of what you're watching mm -hmm. when you go through our archives. Everything has a date so you can find out. You'll know when it was originally broadcast um, and you can you use that information when you're watching it to know. Uh, maybe that product doesn't exist anymore, maybe that service has changed, maybe the information is different, but um, mm -hmm. we're librarians, we archive things, that's what we do. So everything will be here and keep posted. I'm going to go back to the top where we do have a search. So you can search all our entire archives. Um, the entire archives are just the most recent year if you just want recent information about anything. And it will search in the description of the session, the presenters, names, um, so you can um, search our archives since they are so big now. Uh, so that is where our uh, archive session will be. As I mentioned, we do have a Facebook page, and Compass Live is on Facebook. If you are a big Facebook user, please pop over there and give us a like. You'll get notified of when things are coming up. Here's a reminder to log into today's show. Uh, when our recordings are available, I post on here. Oh, go away. I don't want to log in right now, Facebook. Uh, anything, um, anything Encompass Live related. So if you do like to keep up with things using Facebook, do, do like us over there. Um, and other than that, I hope you join us for next week's show. We're talking about reading, reading reflections, what kids are reading now. Um, this will be a discussion about uh, new children's books in, coming up in the last year. Uh, Sally Snyder, who's our children coordinator of children and young adult library services here at the Library Commission, will be with you, along with uh, librarian Dana Fontaine from Fremont High School and uh, Carla Wendelin, who is the co-founder of the Golden Sower Award program, that's for children's books where the kids vote on mm -hmm. new books, are going to talk about um, new titles from the last year or so for children. So if you're looking for some new books for your library or expand your collections, definitely uh, check out that section. She has a companion show, I suppose I'd say, for teens that's coming up December 5th. Same idea, but just specifically for the older um, kids, so for teen novels. So if you want to see the kids, the younger kids for we, uh, next week's and the teens and begin December. So with that, thank you very much for attending. Sign up for any of our upcoming shows and hopefully we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.